Welcome to So True, and today's devotional is entitled Perfect Timing, and it's based on the text Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11, where we read that God makes everything beautiful in his time. Phillips Brooks, the former and famous New England pulpiteer, was known for his calm demeanor, his unruffled spirit. So you can guess the surprise of his associates when they find him pacing up and down the floor of his study like a lion in a cage. One of the friends asked, what is the trouble, Dr. Brooks? He abruptly responded, the trouble is I'm in a hurry, but God isn't. There are times when we feel as if heaven's clock is off by a few days, a few months, a few years. God seems to be taking his time and answering that prayer, meeting that need, changing that circumstance, or bringing final justice. There we sit in the waiting room, unattended and anxious. When we feel that way, guess whose clock needs to be reset? Ours. You see, one of the great paradoxes is that the eternal God is always on time. Ecclesiastes 3.11, to repeat it again, God makes everything beautiful in his time. He who has sat upon his throne forever and who stands between the ordered sequence of temporal events nevertheless pays the strictest attention to the march of time. Our times are in his sovereign and secure hands. That's what Psalm 31.15 tells us. All our days and all that fill our days are written down in his book. You can read about that in Psalm 139, verse 6, and I hope you take the time to do that. The fact is that God's timing is perfect. The paradox is that the eternal God is always on time. Ask Abraham's servant. He was on the road for weeks on the search for a bride for Isaac, He happened to arrive at a well at the exact time Isaac's future wife was coming to water her sheep. Read the story in Genesis 24, 14 to 15. What a coincidence. No, what a providence. Ask the Shunammite woman. Her son had been brought back to life by the prophet Elisha. Several years later, she went to see the king about a property dispute. Lo and behold, Elisha's servant was standing in the king's presence at that very moment recounting the story of the woman and her son. 2 Kings 8 verse 5. What a coincidence. No, what a providence. Ask Mary and Joseph. They were compelled to return to their place of birth for the purposes of a census under Caesar Augustus. There in the town of Bethlehem, Jesus would be born at the right time and in the right place. Micah 5, 2 told us that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. And that happens in Luke 2, verses 1 to 6. Now, Paul sheds an interesting sidelight on that in Galatians 4, verse 4. We read that in the fullness of time or when the fullness of time came, um, Jesus was born of of a woman. Uh, the, the Greek there carries the idea when the time was ripe, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ came born of a woman. What a coincidence. No, what a providence. Look, as we've said, and I repeat, and we need to grasp this and, and grip this and then be gripped by it. The eternal God is always on time. In all these cases, God orchestrated the details that brought the pieces together at the right time so that his plan would unfold in the right way. God is not in a hurry. He knows what he is doing in us and for us. God deserves our trust. More importantly, God requires our patience. Don't forget to set your watch to heaven's time. Don't forget that the eternal God is always punctual. I hope this devotion is an encouragement to you today as you wait for God to work. (laughs) 